welcome to this second video on finding derivatives of logs and exponential functions. And in this video, we're just going to be practicing differentiating functions, and um, we are going to be using more than one rule. So we might use the product rule and the log and exponential rules, or you know, we might combine it with the chain rule. So it, we're, we're combining things so that you're getting um, a wider variety of functions to practice with. Okay, so let's look at this first function, and what we're going to do is um, we're going to think about what our game plan for finding the derivative would be, and then I'm going to ask you to pause the video, and I want to see if you can actually do the derivative, and then I'll run through the solution. So if we look at this particular function, the first thing I notice is that I've got one function in the numerator and a second function in the denominator. So I, it, this is kind of like an f over g situation. So when that's the case, I usually think that, okay, well, I'm probably going to need to use the quotient rule. Okay, so when we're using the quotient rule, we have we have to figure out the derivative of the numerator and figure out the der derivative of the dom denominator. So the numerator, when we go to take that derivative, we're going to need to use, this is an exponential function, so we're going to have to use the exponential rule. But also, since our exponent isn't just plain old t, since I have 5t here, I'm going to need to use the chain rule. Okay, so I'm going to need to multiply by the derivative of that exponent. And when I take the derivative of the exponent, I have to use the power rule. Okay, so let's look at the denominator. So when I'm looking at the denominator, okay, so let's look at the denominator. When I look at this, I'm noticing that I've got two terms. This first term, I just use that exponential rule. And in the second term, that's just a constant, so I would use the constant rule. I don't need to use the chain rule at all when I'm doing the derivative of my denominator. Okay, so I want you to pause the video now and give the derivative a try. And then come back and see if your work matches mine. So welcome back. Hopefully you gave this a try. So when I'm using the quotient rule, first I just take the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So when I take the derivative of my numerator, that's the derivative of this e to the 5t. So if I do e to the 5t, I just get e to the 5t, but I have to multiply by the derivative of this 5t, and that's where that 5 comes from. Okay, so we take this is the derivative of my numerator times my denominator minus my numerator, and then when I take the derivative of my denominator, the e to the t, so I take the derivative of that, that's where I get the e to the t, and then the derivative of 1 just gives me 0. So this is how I just want you to leave your answer. If you wanted to simplify, you could see that See how we have an e to the 5t here, and we have an e to the 5t here? I can cancel that, or I can factor that out pretty easily. That gives me e to the 5t, and then I'm going to have 5 times e to the t minus 1 minus e to the t, and this is all over that e to the t minus 1 squared simplify in there, and then um, that's about all that you could do. So that would give us e to the 5t, and then that would give me um, 4e to the t minus 5 over e to the t minus 1 squared. And again, I, on the test and on the quizzes, I would prefer just this unsimplified answer. Okay, here we go. Here's a second example. Um, let's come up with a game plan, and then I'm going to ask you to pause the video, and you give it a try. So on this one, 
um, it looks to me like I've got an outer function that's the power function and then I've got an inner function that's got the exponential and the z. So when I go to take the derivative, first I need to think power rule. But then since my inner the thing that's being raised to the power is more complicated than just say z, I'm going to need to multiply by the chain rule factor. And when I go to take the derivative of that exponential, I've got two terms, so I'm going to need to use that exponential rule for the first term. And also in that first term, see how I have negative 2z here instead of just plain old z? That means I'm going to have to use that chain rule again. Okay, for the second term, it's just a plain power rule. Okay, so we have our game plan. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and see if you can come up with the derivative and then um, come back and we'll compare answers. Okay, so did you give it a try? So let's run through this together. So first thing, um, I'm going to take the derivative, so I've got to make sure to give it the correct name. So since I'm using a w equals notation, I'm going to use that differential notation for the derivative. So we're going to have dw, and then the variable is z, so I'm going to call it dz equals. So bring this exponent here down in front. I have 3, and then my inside to 1 less power, so this is 3 minus 1 here. And then I'm multiplying by the derivative of my inside function. Okay, so I'm going to copy this first part, just a straight copy there, and over here I need to finish that derivative. Okay, so when I go to take the derivative of this e to the 2z, that's where this e to the, I'm sorry, when I go to take the derivative of this e to the negative 2z, that's where I get this e to the negative 2z. But then, um, since my exponent here is more complicated than just plain old z, I've got almost a function in my exponent, I need to multiply by the derivative of that exponent. So the derivative of that exponent is negative 2. Then finally, I take the derivative of that z. Okay, so here's another one. Um, before we even start with our game plan, I see a square root, so my first step whenever I see those square roots is I rewrite that as a power. Okay, so game plan for derivatives. The first thing I'm thinking is I've got um, a power, a one-half power. So I'm going to think, okay, well, I'm going to use the power rule. And then the next thing I notice is that that thing that's being raised to the power is more complicated. It's a function in itself, and so I'm going to have to multiply or use the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of the inside. When I go to take the derivative of the inside, I've got two terms here. So on the first term, i got to use that um, log rule. And then on the second term, I'm just using the power rule. So pause the video, give it a try, and come back and check your answer. Okay, welcome back. So if I'm going to take the derivative, the first thing I do is I bring this power down in front, and that's where I get that 1 half. And then I have my inside function to the 1 less. So 1 half minus 1 gives us that negative 1 half. I, multiplying by the derivative of this inside function. So I have an inside function here, so I'm going to multiply by its derivative. So these first two factors here are just the same. When I go to take the derivative of natural log of x, I get 1 over x, so that's that derivative. When I take the derivative of x squared, I get 2x. I would leave my answer just like that. Okay, so we have one last problem here. We have y equals the natural log of this quotient here. So if you first look at this, your first inclination might be to take, start on the outside function, take the derivative of the natural log, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. And um, you'll get the answer. It'll um, 
it'll work, but I want to show you an alternative. Instead of doing that, what we could do is we can use our log rules and simplify this just a little bit before we actually do the derivative. Or actually, probably not really simplifying it, but probably the better word is expand this. So the thing to remember here is if we have log of x divided by y, you could expand that or rewrite that as log x minus log y. And if we do that in this situation, we're going to have natural log of 2t minus 3 minus the natural log of 5t plus 1. These derivatives here are much easier and shorter and nicer looking than the derivative of this. They're going to end up being equivalent, but they'll look quite different. So let's um, think about how we would take the derivative of each of these terms, each of these natural log terms. You'd first use that natural log rule or the log rule. And then because I have more than just plain old t in there, since I have another function inside my natural log, I'm going to need to use the chain rule. And um, when I take the derivative of my inside, that's basically a power rule and a constant rule. Okay, so let's run through this really quick. So our derivative is going to be called dy dt. So when you take the derivative of a log, so remember what the derivative of a log looks like, of the natural log, it's 1 over x. So we're going to have 1 over 2t minus 3, but then I have to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. So that's the derivative of the 2t minus 3. So here on the second term, I'm going to have 1 over 5t plus 1, but I got to multiply by the derivative of what's inside my log. So we're going to have to multiply by the derivative of 5t plus 1. So this gives us, we have 1 over 2t minus 3. The derivative of this 2t minus 3 is just 2. And here we have 1 over 5t plus 1. The derivative of the 5t plus 1 is just 5. So our derivative would look like 2 over 2t minus 3 minus 5 over 5t plus 1. And if you think about what you might envision the derivative of this looking like, if, if without rewriting it, we'd have 1 over this whole fraction. And then we would have to multiply by the derivative of this whole fraction. And then for this derivative, we would have to use the quotient rule. So this here is a much simpler process than doing it the way um, without rewriting it. So that's it for this video. See you next time.